In the waters of Canada and America's Pacific Northwest, there's a disease threat that can result in catastrophic losses of farm salmonids. Infectious hematopoietic necrosis, known as IHN, is an endemic disease of wild Pacific salmonid species in this region. IHNV is an OIE, reportable disease, and that's because of, of how many species it affects throughout the salmonids, but also that it's extremely virulent, that it can cause epidemics. It's a natural disease of Pacific salmonids, and it's endemic to the populations that are here. Through our monitoring program, we've recognized that IHNV occurs naturally in sockeye salmon and other Pacific salmon. In British Columbia, it's, it's mostly occurring in sockeye salmon, and over a 30-year time series, we see that the variability goes up and down over the years in between stocks, but it is always present in sockeye salmon, and it does occur naturally. It's an endemic pathogen. It would be extremely difficult to eradicate IHNV in a wild population, and currently in British Columbia and throughout the Pacific Northwest, IHNV has co-evolved with Pacific salmon and is a naturally occurring pathogen in these species. So what risk does the constant presence of IHNV in wild salmon stocks represent to farmed Atlantic salmon in the region? In farm salmon in net pens, it's, it would be impossible to eradicate it because the source of it is sockeye salmon and they're around the farms all the time. So you might be able to control it within your populations, but you'll never be able to 100% control its presence in the environment within, in which you're raising the fish. So there's likely spread between the wild Pacific salmon and the farm fish. And once it gets into the farm fish, these fish are extremely susceptible. Through laboratory studies that we've conducted here at the Pacific Biological Station, we've shown that Atlantic salmon are nearly 100 times more susceptible than sockeye salmon to the endemic virus that we have here in British Columbia. And we know that when they become infected, they're undergoing an acute IHNV disease that they shed copious amounts of virus. They can really put out a lot of virus and so in a net pen, a confined area where you have a large number of fish, that virus can spread quite rapidly amongst the population. Typically by the time it's starting to show clinical disease, it's rapid. You know, within a couple of weeks you're looking at very heavy mortality that you're struggling to keep up with. You can look at 30 percent of your farm gone within weeks. It disrupts everything right from the fish and their welfare on the farm to the staff that have to handle the mortalities and the death, and then right through to the, the company and then their customers. So what can producers do to mitigate the risks associated with IHN infections? It's really crucial for the farms to practice strict biocontainment and biosecurity. It's important for the farms to have rapid diagnosis of the disease, so it's important for them to recognize the clinical signs of the fish so that they can get a very quick diagnosis and identify that it is indeed IHNV in the population. And then they can quarantine off that site, eliminate boat movement into the site, and really contain that virus. So another tool that the farmers can use to safeguard against IHNV is a vaccine. So through research, a DNA vaccine has been developed and there is one available commercially that has been shown to be greatly efficacious in protecting Atlantic salmon in particular against IHNV disease. And it is protective throughout their production cycle. The industry in BC has adopted universal application of the vaccine. To date, there has not been a IHN outbreak in vaccinated fish. Now, the vaccine has been shown not only to eliminate disease, but we've also demonstrated through lab studies that DNA vaccine can greatly reduce the amount of shedding that occurs from an infected fish. So the fish not becoming infected due to the vaccine then greatly diminishes the spread of that virus in a population. So what's the risk of another outbreak in the future? We anticipate to see that there'll be another IHN event in wild salmon within the next, well, certainly it's about every decade that these occur, and I believe the last one is 2012. When that risk increases, I'm sure that the processes and plans that are involved are gonna minimize or mitigate any risk, especially in, in fish that are vaccinated. We have not detected 
IHNV in fish that have been vaccinated and uh, some of the fish that have not, yes, you can pick it up. And there's records of that in DFO. How does the industry manage to reduce the occurrence and impact of a future outbreak? The Canadian Sciences Advisory Secretariat, or CSAS, has set up a review of IHNV in 2017 that says that the risk to wild salmon is low because of the incidence of vaccine on the farms, especially concerning the Fraser River sockeye strain that migrate through the uh, discovery passages, etc. So along with uh, diligence in biosecurity and fish health management, the vaccine plays a critical role in making sure that there's no transfer of either IHNV to farm salmon or from sa farm salmon. So we're really looking at the farmed wild interaction and cutting off that chance or risk, shall we say, of infection from one source or the other. So is there a risk that complacency could impact on maintaining the success in the future? I think there is a significant concern for complacency. I think as outbreaks fade from people's memories, the importance of biosecurity, of communication, of the need for vaccination, there's a, a significant threat or concern that that would increase. There's always a risk of complacency. Let's look at our measles outbreak that have been occurring in, in the population. You don't see it, it doesn't happen, it's not a big issue, and then when there is an outbreak, yeah. So as a fish health professional, I would definitely uh, be on the side of vaccination to protect your economic aspect of it, but also for the protection of wild fish as well.